Oh wait, Sunny's coming. Sunny's yeah, coming. Yeah. Microphone. Hi again. I think it's going to be really interesting just to get some of the animals, definitely some of the frogs, definitely some of the crazy bird sounds and anything else that we might find. But I'm more looking to the end result because I know what they'll come up with will be awesome. That's definitely a dolphin. I said dolphin. Oh, actually looks a little pink. Should we try and get underwater microphone in there? The dolphins were the sound I was most interested in. I wanted to sort of make our first underwater field recording. So I made a point not to listen to recordings online of what a river dolphin might sound like before we went down there. So that was the one that was most important to me. Maybe just try putting it in the water just a little bit to make sure it's working. Here we go. <laughs> just bombs away. Check it out. You can, you can kind of hear it. It's rubbery sounding. Oh, nice. Yeah, I can tell I hear them. It's amazing. Yeah, we're, we're rolling. The underwater recording of the dolphins was like a big one for me. And we've used underwater things on our records before, but to actually like have a microphone in the water and have the headphones on and hear the dolphins, um, yeah, I can't, it's hard to put into words why I, I thought it was special. Brian, he was very quiet a lot of the times on the boat because you could tell he was experiencing something. I don't think any of us were, because he was so connected to it because he's so passionate about it. Quiet. But I definitely hear it. See it's if like, I can... Ur, ur, ur. You hear them, you might see pink dolphins, you know, and think, oh, yeah, but then yeah. it actually being something that happens, it's refreshing to know that it still can. Well, it's really electronic sounding. Mm -hmm. When we put the, like the headphones on, like, everybody's eyes just, like, we're like, what? So I think everybody found it pretty special. So, so happy right now. When we knew we were going to be making field recordings, we thought it would be cool to have somebody who knew the sounds of the rainforest and could talk about them. So we met Igor for the first time as someone who could help us find good locations and explain to us what we were hearing. This is a pretty nice spot to find frogs because of the vegetation. Frogs, they love these aquatic vegetations to call from. So I think that at night it will be a good spot to, to come. In my research, I like to work with bioacoustics. Bioacoustics is a field of biology dedicated to study animal sounds, record them and try to figure out what they mean. So with the frogs, I mean, we couldn't see them. You could just hear like the sheer number of animals that had to be out there making this noise and were probably very close to you and you saw none of them. And to me that made it almost more haunting in a way. We've used frogs on a ton of our records in the past. It's overwhelming the amount of frequencies you hear and to think it all serves a purpose to communicate in some way. Frogs are pretty musical because they call in a given uh, rhythm, which we call call rate. So I think that the guys can use frog sounds to make music. Yeah, there's a frog in the boat. Really? Right here. Nice. Frogs are declining worldwide, mainly due to habitat loss. Many species are restricted to specific habitats. 
So when we lose a given habitat, we might be losing a lot of species associated with it. If we have some kind of emotional connections with the nature, every time we lose an, a single individual of a species, we might be suffering as well.